ion exchange chromatography is a chromatography process that allows the separation of ions and polar molecules based on their charge. As well as other forms of chromatography, in ion chromatography, there is a mobile phase, which generally consists of buffer solution. And there is a stationary phase which consists of a matrix that contains charged ionizable functional groups. This type of chromatography is subdivided into an anion exchange chromatography and cation exchange chromatography. An anion exchange chromatography. Negatively charged molecules are attracted to a positively charged solid support, which is usually beads that provide a positively charged surface, such as resin quaternary ammonium. In cation exchange chromatography, positively charged molecules are attracted to negatively charged solid support, which is commonly beads that provide negatively charged functional groups, such as resin methyl sulfate. Ion exchange chromatography is frequently used for the separation and purification of proteins. The basic process of this chromatography can be represented in four steps. Conditioning or equilibration of the stationary phase, sample loading, washing, and elution of the retained molecules. The first step is the equilibration of the stationary phase to the desired start conditions. The pH and ionic strength of the sample buffer are selected to ensure that, when sample is loaded, proteins of interest bind to the medium, and as many impurities as possible do not bind. Therefore, the same buffer is used for the equilibration of the stationary phase. When equilibrium is reached, all stationary phase charged groups are bound with exchangeable counter ions, such as chloride or sodium. When the column is equilibrated, the second step is sample application. Depending on the pH of their environment, proteins may carry a net positive charge, a net negative charge, or no charge. This net charge can be determined by comparing the pHi of each protein with the pH of the buffer. Proteins are large biomolecules, consisting of one or more long chains of amino acid residues. Amino acids are organic compounds that contain amine and carboxyl functional groups, along with a side chain specific to each amino acid. Depending on the pH of their environment, the amino group can be protonated and became positively charged. The carboxyl group can be deprotonated and became negatively charged, and the side chain of some amino acids can become positively or negatively charged due to the gain or loss of protons. So, the net charge on the molecule can be positive, neutral, or negative. The isoelectric point or PHI is the pH at which a protein carries neutral charge. At a pH below their isoelectric point, proteins carry a net positive charge. And at a pH above their isoelectric point, they carry a net negative charge. In this example the pH of the buffer is equal 5, consequently, protein A has a net negative charge. And both, protein B and C, carry a net positive charge. In addition, protein C is more positively charged, since its pHi is higher than the pHi of protein B. If we apply cation exchange chromatography, protein that has a net positive charge, it will bind to the negative charge beads of the stationary phase. On the other hand, uncharged proteins or those with a net negative charge would not bind. They pass through the column at the same speed as the flow of buffer. When all the sample has been loaded, the next step is column washing. The column is washed with start buffer. To ensure that all non-binding proteins have passed through the column. When all the sample has been loaded and the column washed, conditions are altered in order to elute the bound proteins. Most frequently, proteins are eluted by increasing the ionic strength of the buffer, or, occasionally, by changing the pH. As ionic strength increases, the salt ions compete with the bound components for charges on the surface of the medium, and one or more of the bound species begin to elute and move down the column. The proteins with the lowest net charge at the selected pH 
will be the first ones eluted from the column as ionic strength increases. Similarly, the proteins with the highest charge will be most strongly retained and will be eluted last. Protein B has the lowest net positive charge, so it can be eluted first. Then, protein C with the highest net positive charge, it can be eluted next by increasing the salt concentration. Also varying the pH of the buffer can be used to affect the separation and to elute the retained proteins. As we seen, the pHi of the protein B is equal 7 and the pHi of protein C is equal 9. So if we add a buffer with pH above the isoelectric point of protein B and below the isoelectric point of protein C, the protein B will become negatively charged and can then be eluted. The protein C is still charged positively, consequently, still retained. Next, protein C can be eluted if we apply a buffer with pH above its isoelectric point. So, it becomes negatively charged and it will pass through the column. One of the primary advantages for the use of ion chromatography is only one interaction involved during the separation. Another advantage of ion exchange is the predictability of elution patterns. By controlling changes in ionic strength or in pH of the buffer, using different forms of gradient, proteins are eluted differently in a purified concentrated form.